1986 with Chuck Hall on behalf of 3D Systems inventing the world's first 3D printer, an SLA system costing hundreds of thousands of dollars to print. And this was the, the evolution of 3D printing, where it started, where it came from. Some people think it doesn't really help us, you can just make ploys and stuff like that. It's really not true. I've seen people 3D print a bridge that actually holds like hundreds of cars at the same time. Yeah, I mean it's, it's super fun and you can be, do whatever you want, be really creative and uh, yeah, it's kind of like The innovation of personal 3D printers with MakerBot in January of 2009, not that long ago, when personal desk-based 3D printers started to become big, and nowadays they're everywhere along with like Form Labs and uh, MakerBot and um, all these different 3D printing companies that are making personal 3D printers now. And then um, there was the Defense Distributed, Defense Distributed. 3D printed handgun um, that was banned by the government because he was releasing actual gun models online 3D printing and that was a big step in the evolution of 3D printing because they started to realize the boundaries of where and where they couldn't go with the 3D printer. Uh, this is a partially printed AR-15 and I mean all the business, all the business is happening up in here. This is where all the most the explosive forces of the rifle happen under the locking bolt and in the barrel but just as an accident of history this is the regulated component commerce and uh, I thought it served the purposes of this project pretty well to start printing these out telling you that hey you can too. Nowadays they're even 3D printing body parts including the bio hand and the leg and all these things that um, are actually changing the way people live their lives today because of 3D printers. I like it because you can just create a new part for say your camera if it breaks. Like if the flash like that piece of plastic breaks, just print a new one, run the wiring through, and, it's, and you're good to go. Um, I mean, there's definitely more advantages than disadvantages. Like, you can create um, something, I mean, out of just a computer program and like thin air, it seems, in such a short amount of time. For some people, it looks like it takes a long time, but when you really think about it, that's an advantage. It's actually a really short time compared to, say, in a factory, when it takes weeks or months because they've got hundreds of different projects they're working on. But the only really disadvantage I can think about is sometimes when you're on a time constraint, sometimes the quality of the product isn't as good with like different other methods in 3D printing, but I think mostly it's, it's pretty good. I mean like, there's lots of different programs you can use, so using one, I used quite a simple one, and that one kind of made it really easy to get into, and it was actually quite easy to learn, but there's some uh, programs that are a lot more complicated, and so sometimes that can, process can take a little longer. But. This is Tinkercad, it's like really, really easy to learn on. Um, it's easier with a mouse, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, and it also has like some like, a lot of stock things, so you can like have boxes and cylinders and like circles and stuff like that. So it's pretty easy to get started. Oh, figure it out. We're good. It was really hard to learn at first, but as I kept going, it got a lot easier. Like by my third week, I had basically mastered Tinkercad. A couple months ago, I did move on from Tinkercad onto a new program, program called OnShape, which basically just gives you more control over shapes and what you actually want it to look like. To me, you can make many things, like you can make a plate 
if you needed a plate. You could make anything you wanted to. Of course, it's frustrating to learn it at, the, at first, but you get used to it really quickly. And after that, you can make anything you want. So where, where will the future of 3D printing go? What will it look like? Well, no one really knows because it could go in any sorts of different directions. But maybe it's biological 3D printed parts. Like, like you could print a liver in your living room and then just get like surgery put so that it could get put inside of you. Maybe there'll be lots of different colors and types and styles and materials of 3D printing. Maybe you'll be able to print titanium-based tools out of nothing, like in the middle of your living room. Or maybe you'll one day be able to, everything will be made out of 3D printers. So instead of getting a factory, you're making a shoe custom made, maybe you'll just 3D print it and then it'll be done and easy and simple. So there are actually nine main types of 3D printing. But all these nine can be subcategorized into four different main types of printing, including FDM 3D printing, SLA, SLS, and EBM. FDM is one of the most popular styles of 3D printing out there. It's like the hot glue gun style, similar to um, what you might see as a MakerBot robot or a 3D printer. And SLA is a 3D resin-based um, uh, 3D printer, something like Formlabs. And basically how that works is you you do a layer of resin, then you use an infrared light to um, heat the first layer so that you can do precise um, positioning on the 3D printing and melt it so that it becomes hard plastic. And then there's basically another layer similar to SLA, SLS, where you do a layer of sand and like, or some sort of micro um, thing like sand, and then you can do a layer of glue, then a layer, then a glue, then, and it makes the shape of how it goes. Also EBM, the fourth main type of 3D printing, is basically where you have a single object, like a, a sphere of something, and then you take away the stuff, the material that you don't need to make the object in the end. Well, it's kind of complicated because it's still in the very beginning industry, the, the beginning steps of the industry. But first you have to find your type of 3D printer that you want, whether that's SLS or FDM or uh, whatever it is. Then you have to buy the 3D printer, get your own personal 3D printer, and learn how to model a 3D object in software. And then once you have chosen your software, built your object, you can slice your object in a slicer, export it to the printer, print it, and then um, you should be really good to go. Thank you.